Hello students, and this video is going to be about how to write a mastery level hook. So you're in the introduction section, and you're looking at how can I make my introduction uh, get to the mastery category, and one way you can do that is to write a very interesting and relevant hook. So let's dive into this topic and see what we can do. Your hook is the beginning of your paper. It's the most important part because as you're scanning and, and breezing through articles trying to read yourself, you read the first couple sentences of an article, it doesn't interest you, you stop reading. That is exactly what people will do to your writing. So you want to capture the audience attention. You don't want that yawning baby on the right. You want to have people yeah. excited. So build interest, capture the attention, make that baby stop yawning. Think about who your audience is. How are you going to capture your audience? Okay, Captain Hook is a great way if you're talking to young little kids. Okay, capture the audience. If your audience looks like this, two sentences in your paper, they're not going to keep reading. That's why it's so important to, to write a good hook. So we're going to show you a couple of um, good hook strategies. And the first strategy that you can use in your writing is to start with narrative. I know that you're writing nonfiction, and you probably think that nonfiction is dry and boring, but it doesn't have to be. Nonfiction, it can be interesting and exciting. And one way to make it exciting and interesting at the very beginning is to start your paper or your essay or your article with some narrative. And I've heard this referred to as the PBS voice, because if you watch a PBS documentary, they don't talk about like, the whale entered the ocean, the ocean then was blue. They it don't like list a bunch cold. of facts. They make it and they write it and they say it in an exciting way. So I'm going to show you this first uh, couple of videos that show you the introduction to a movie that uses narrative language to describe what's happening. And you can use these same strategies in your writing about whatever topic it is. So check these out. Don't I know worry about the words that. Are. <laughs> the vast frozen north. A realm so harsh it seems barren and devoid of life. But from beneath the ice, giants emerge. Yeah. I want to watch this video because it's not like there was a frozen pond, the walrus emerged. It was like the vast frozen earth. It's all exciting. They're using these really cool languages. Words, and I know there's music, but you can do something similar in your own writing. Let's check out one more the PBS voice. Over four billion years in the making, an island adrift in southern seas. It's Australia, the giant down under. So they're not saying Australia is an island. It was formed in 1722. They're saying like, this is this giant island and they're making you excited about it. And that's what narrative writing can do to your own um, work. And we'll show you an example of that later. Okay, so the second strategy, and this is probably one you're familiar with, is using an interesting or relevant quotation to start off your writing. Um, this can be a little bit trickier, I think, than narrative writing, because there's a couple of things you need to think about. First of all, your quote has to be on the topic. It can't just be a random quote about something, and then you try to tie it in. If you do that, it's gonna, it's not going to work. Right? So your quote should be about something about what you're writing about. Make the quote well, relevant to the topic. Yep. Uh, or the quote fits the theme. Like right. Even if you're, if you're talking about um, the Revolutionary War, and your quote was about war in general, that That's might fine. work, even though it's not about the topic. Or even if the person giving the quote fits the topic, like if you're talking about the Revolutionary War and it's a quote from George Washington, like they at least are related to each other. Right. But don't make it like a ridiculous quote that doesn't mean anything to do with it, like Justin Bieber about the Revolutionary War. Yeah, that, that wouldn't, that wouldn't work. Sense. So here's a couple <laughs> of examples of some quotes here on the page. Um, some of our founding fathers and famous people, they have really, really interesting quotes that you could look up and find to use to start your, your paper. So let's take a look at some examples, okay? So the first example is an intro using a quote. And I, I wrote this so that you can see what I might do when I use a quote here. So the intro that I wrote, Thomas Jefferson once said, the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. So you see I put the quote right into the intro there in that first sentence. And then the rest of the paragraph, I'm gonna use that quote to frame out my topic. This statement couldn't be more accurate when thinking about the Syrian revolution. Many people are dying on both sides, and this is necessary in order for the Syrian people to gain the liberty they deserve. 
the United States should live by the words of their founding father and help the Syrian patriots overthrow their tyrant ruler, Bashar al-Assad. So I used the, the quote, which I think is interesting, right? It's a, mm -hmm. It kind of makes you think, you grabs my attention. But then I just didn't leave the quote alone. I used some of the words from the quote, like liberty, patriot, and tyrant, throughout the rest of my introduction. And then you can clearly see that the rest of the paper is going to be about why the United States should help the Syrian people overthrow their government. As Jefferson kind of said. said. So you, you use the, the quote is on topic, right? Right. It's on the same theme of, of rebellion. It's not about Syria, but it's about um, rebellion, in rebellion and tyrants. So it, it makes sense. As long as you pick a quote that is relevant to your topic, your theme, your intro, whatever you're ta talking about. Okay. So the second example is my attempt at the PBS voice and the, using some narrative writing to start my uh, paper about World War One. The sound of gunfire rang out in the distance as the soldiers sat quietly in the trenches. They were numb to the, by now, constant noise of warfare. As after many months they had come to accept their place in the world, sleeping in the damp filth of mud and disease, never knowing when it would be their turn to feel the glaze of an enemy artillery shell. This was life for a World War I soldier living in the trenches. The style of trench warfare contributed greatly to the poor emotional state of the soldiers fighting in World War One. So it's like, rather than just talking about the fact that there was trench warfare, I did my best to like picture what it would be like to be in a trench. You could feel the soldiers. Um, you could be them. You were in the trenches with them. You could smell the filth in that introduction. And, and writing like this is so much better than saying, have you ever wondered what it was like to be in a trench? Well, no, I haven't. haven't. <laughs> so trying to describe it and put the reader there rather than asking them a question, the question is a much more effective strategy. So that wraps up our look at writing a mastery level hook. We gave you two strategies that you can use to engage the reader and make them want to read the rest of your paper. So now we want you to try doing this when you go to write your introduction.